Now, Kiki knows she had no business with about 15 children having a BBL. And when she decided to move that belly fat to her ass and still continue to get pregnant on top of it, I knew she was going to go back to this. I knew she was going to take her ass to Columbia and get it out. She did it for a reason. There's always a reason behind what we're doing here, okay? She got enough kids to fill her children's ministry at her church that she started. And she couldn't be no pastor of a church with a BBL, unlike how Jamal Bryant like him around here. So you already gorgeous, so what do you have to prove? You already beautiful, so why does it have to be that enticing? We can't hear nothing that you saying that God say for looking at your shape. And anytime you got on a dress, that when you turn around, I can see the very cup of your butt. The way your butt is shaped, I can see the crease between your tail and your imprint of your dress. Something is wrong with your spirit or you didn't have no mirrors when you left home. Somebody said, what does it got to do with faith? Everything. Because the Bible said, <laughs> the Bible said, arouse by faith. You refuse for people to look at you and think you are a slut instead of an evangelist. You refuse for anybody to get your identification mixed up because of the way I look. And I don't care what nobody said. Well, you know what? It, 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 it ain't, it ain't what's, what you wear is what's in your heart. But what's in your heart is testifying. The way you look testifies of what's in your heart. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It does. Out of that same heart, it testifies of your dedication to God. It testifies of the fact that I refuse for anybody to look at me because the bottom line of it is, is my testimony should be something that I tell, not what people still see. I just said something right there and you don't have to tap that screen on me today. I don't need no help today. I love to look beautiful, but there's a time and a place for it all. And Sunday morning service is not a time for you to show us your nipples in your titties. That's not the time to do it. And I got to give it to you plain talk because you don't understand nothing else. That's not the time. Where is your bra? How are you coming to church on a Sunday morning to worship God and you have no bra on? I, I'm not getting this. I'm not getting this. Jumpsuits on, no underwear on. Okay, so we don't wear girdles no more. But have you ever heard of Spanx? Have you ever heard of something that keeps you from jiggling like that? And then you won't sit down. You're the person that just won't sit down because you come to church because you think you're cute. I get so sick and tired of going up and down my Facebook line. And I'm going to tell you right now, when I see pictures like that, I'm going to delete you as my friend. I'm going to block you. People of God, every time you look around, we are believers. And there's something on you that's got to be naked. For some reason, the women of God in this hour don't want to put on clothes. And I don't know why. What is it? Because we finally got enough money to buy titties? Because we finally got enough money to go and buy an extra behind? And now everything you wear got to be tight, got to be sexy? So now sex appeal is on an all-time high. Not worship, not brokenness, not Lord here I am, not God purge me and cleanse me. God... Where is the scripture that says that women ought to dress in modest apparel with shame face? We're not shame anymore. And there's something wrong with the spirit of the Holy Ghost that you say you got when the Holy Ghost in you don't ever say to you, that's too tight. How is it that you don't think it's too tight when it's so tight in the front that you can actually see the print of your vagina? Really, y'all, come on. It hurts because we're the Christians. It hurts and we're the Christians and we looking like hoes. 
I'm sorry. We're the Christians. And we up in the pulpit with leather pants on. And some of us ain't got no business having them on. Period. And we done went body con crazy. Everything is a body con dress. Are y'all serious? I don't care if you ain't in church. Who takes a picture like that? Because you're confusing us. You're confusing us. Because one minute you want to give us the word of the Lord. And one minute you want to tell us what God is saying. And one minute you want to prophesy. And the next minute we see you taking an all out sex picture. And a selfie of yourself. And I don't care if you don't want me as your mama no more. I don't care if my spiritual daughters did just disown me and you could you could unfriend me. You could say whatever you want to say. Because I always had to be. Who else was gonna take care of me but me? And so when you have that spirit, you tend to treat God the same way. Oh, okay. And this is extremely nuanced particularly in the black community, more specifically in the black religious and Christian community. So in the black community, there's always been a conversation about women and our bodies and our bodies causing men to stumble. And, you know, and this is more specific when it comes to curvier women, because I think an argument can be made that if you have a curvier body, it is harder to hide certain parts of your body, right? And so that is something that the, this has always been a thing in the black community, in the black church. And oftentimes the, the conversation about, you know, what people wear, what's appropriate, what's not appropriate. These conversations happen after church, the gossip that goes on outside of the church after church is over, you know, there's, you know, this whole come as you are thing. And, you know, so what I really want to do is, is touch on a nuance that is not often talked about, which is when you get your body done, you know, if you get a BBL, for example, um, you know, and women have said that often you have to look in the mirror more. You have to be, especially in that first year, because they say it takes about a year for your body to really settle in. So you have to be more conscious and aware of how you look. You're looking in the mirror, you're taking pictures, you're asking other people to look to see if the fullness is still there, this and that. So there's a nuance that I want to, to point out, the difference between women who, some women, not all, some women who have natural bodies, who grow up their entire life and they have a curvy body. And in, in a lot of cases, they don't even think about the curvy body. It's not until someone mentions it or is looking at them that they're then reminded, right? Because they've just existed like that versus a woman who is in her thirties or forties going out and actually attaining or a, a, a curvier body or enhancing the curves that she has. And now there's a particular attention placed, not only attention that she's giving her, her curves, but also other people. So that is a very different dynamic. So I, I want to kind of really touch on this nuance because I think that when we talk about BBLs in the black church and people can say, well, why are you bringing this up? I mean, there's always been curvy women in the in the black church. Yes. However, there have not always been curvy women who have just come into these new found curves. <laughs> you know, this is kind of a newer phenomenon with the rise of the BBLs. So it raises questions around the appropriateness of the surgery, not only getting the surgery and then, and then going to church as a woman, but also being a leader in the church and having that surgery and that adding another layer, right? And you being a role model um, where young, who, who young girls look up to and other women look up to. Well, this is Kiki Wyatt. And as you can see, she looks a lot different than in the clip that I showed earlier. Allegedly, she had her BBL removed, as Tasha Kay said, because she is an emerging pastor 
and um, it seems as though she is going to be the leader of a church that she is planning on starting. So stay tuned for part two where I will go into even more depth on this topic. And if you are interested in learning more about black women and our bodies, check out my body privilege video, which I made some months ago. So like, share, and subscribe. Click the links in the description box. Join the Black and Invisible YouTube membership group. Check out my book on Amazon. And if you feel compelled, please donate to my channel via Cash App and or super thanks and as always stay tuned for more videos